So I think that's one of the challenges of our generation is to not just to say, hey, you need to know the Bible in kind of a command sort of way, but hey, let me tell you about how incredibly fascinating and mysterious and curious and strange and wonderful the Bible is. In that way, kind of just ignite this interest in them as to so why uh, the, the Bible is such a fascinating book. I mean, ultimately, of course, because it leads to Christ. But even if you, if you kind of don't, if you kind of set that, that, that part aside, the stories themselves draw you in. Mm. And uh, I mean, the ultimate goal is to draw people into the story so that they see themselves in this story. That it's not, oh, I'm reading somebody else's, you know, I'm reading the story of the ancient Israelites, or I'm reading the story of David or whoever, but to see in this story, oh, so I'm actually part of this ongoing story. Mm-hmm. I'm actually been drawn in because of my union with Christ. I'm being drawn into this long story that's much bigger than I am. Yeah. And I don't know, I, that, I think that hits people on a real deep level mm-hmm. because we do tend to kind of feel isolated and just kind of this, this I'm just this little bitty story that's disconnected from the bigger story. And that helps to connect people to a broader range of experiences, a broader range of how God has been working through time. So one of the goals of the book is to draw people into this salvation story. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how seeing yourself in the story and being drawn in is different than what we might talk about when we talk about eisegesis and understanding the stories um, as if they were only for us or yeah, yeah the difference there yeah so i mean we we do tend to kind of individualize to an extreme you know when we when we read bible stories and and this isn't just our fault it's sometimes been the fault of the church you know we there have been tendencies within the church to say okay well, what does the story have to say to me mm. well it, it does have something to say to me or to us but that's not the first question that we should ask. You know, the first question is always, okay, what is God doing in this story? Specifically, what is Christ revealing in this story that tells us about about Him, about His plan for the world, about His saving actions in Christ? And those are the most important questions to ask. And that kind of leads us then to, okay, He's done all this, but He's done it for us, for me, for you. So, how do we fit into, into this picture? And so rather than kind of engaging in what you call eisegesis, kind of reading our understanding into the text, the goal is to say, okay, what's God doing? And how is he doing this for us? And therefore, what does the story reveal to us about who we are, you know, what's wrong with us, what God has done in Christ to, to remedy that? And therefore, with that bigger understanding, how we then fit into this story of what God has been doing and is continuing to do in the history of the world. 